Uh, to begin the program, I would like to introduce our president uh, from, uh, of Lawrence Technological University, the illustrious Dr. Lewis Walker. Well, thank you very much, Dean. I don't know whether I can live up to that adjective we put in there or not, but uh, I'm very happy to see so many of you here this evening and uh, want to add my welcome to Lawrence Tech University. And I just want to say, uh, in general, you know, we live in an area in Detroit that has really been beat up pretty bad nationally, subject of jokes on Jay Leno and, and the NBC uh, television report, and uh, you know kind of what uh, people are saying out there, but yet I see underneath all of that some institutions that I think are using this time to really get very strong. And in some of the conversations that I heard even tonight, that some of the work is opening up for some of the architecture firms, which means people are beginning to do things and uh, respond, and our economy is beginning to respond. But as I look kind of underlying on our main uh, industry here in the automotive and manufacturing, that's on the rise. And I know some companies that were very near the, the edge that have really come back, and I think they're a much stronger institution, and I think we're going to see many of our companies really become very strong. And I want to tell you that Lawrence Tech, in this time frame, has used this time to really keep moving forward to become very strong. And we're becoming much stronger. Our vision is to be a preeminent private university producing leaders with an entrepreneurial spirit and a global view. And that first word of being preeminent, we're working hard to really make Lawrence Tech a leading technological university in this country. We're not there yet, but we're well on our way and we're working hard with many initiatives to really move forward and increase a number of items that we've identified as key to being a preeminent university. And I want to say the, a lot of the work that I see in this college really tells me that the College of Architecture is really helping us to move along to be preeminent. And that this college is well on that road to being a preeminent College of Architecture. When I look at the list of our 2010-2011 lecturers that are coming here for the lecture series, you know, I'm not an expert in this, I'm not an architect, but it reads like a who's who of architects and accomplished architects internationally, worldwide. And certainly, our honoree here today is among the top of those and is our alum, and you'll meet him in, in just a few minutes. The, I want to thank the Alumni, Architecture Alumni Association. Uh, I understand this is the 14th such award. And we're very happy to uh, be able to present the award tonight here. And then here from, uh, uh, and I guess it's no secret, but here from Dan Whiney about the uh, work that he's done and the accomplishments that he's had in, in this uh, great field. So I just want to say, uh, Watch what we're doing at Lawrence Tech. We have many initiatives from everything from our quest to produce leaders to building that global understanding, that global awareness, and building the entrepreneurial mindset. And we are moving forward and uh, will, and I, I think we'll be seen as being a much stronger university right now, but as this economy begins to really change in a few years where we really notice it, and uh, employment go starts going down and, and things start to really improve, I think you'll see, and particularly those of you who are our alums, a much stronger Lawrence Technological University. So welcome, and I guess I'll turn it back over to Dean Leroy. Well, I've been admonished, pre-admonished, to be brief tonight so that we can get to the speaker. Um, and I just want to give you a brief update on some of the things that are happening here at the College of Architecture and Design, since we have so many alums tonight that I know you're interested in this. Um, in a tough year around the country, in our industry, and in higher education in general, 
where enrollments are down across, across colleges, we continue at the College of Architecture and Design to do quite well. For example, our graduate program is up by over 30% this year. Uh, we are teaching with the assistance of one of the uh, people, Mark Farlow, who will speak after me tonight. Uh, we have one of only two online Master of Architecture programs in the United States, and Mark is being very adventuresome this year. I know it's a lot of work. Uh, we are offering the first online studio in the history of architectural education. Uh, and, and we think that this is going to be a, a real crowning achievement. A lot of work though, Mark, right? Um, uh, our, we just found out that our transportation design studios last week at the Paris Auto Show had a video that was exhibited and premiered at the Paris Auto Show, an international ex 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 exhibition of that. I just found out today that two of our imaging alumni uh, have just uh, uh, worked on a video production or a media production that has won an Emmy Award. You've heard of the Emmy Awards, right? Um, uh, from the Evolvo design competition to first place in this year's ASHRAE design competition, our architecture students as well as the, as the rest of our students, uh, numerous awards that we've won. Uh, and, um, and then this year, uh, Dan, Dan Whiney, our speaker, our distinguished uh, uh, award recipient, um, he is going to help us put together a series of internships for graduate students that are, are going to be in our new global practice option, and we're going to put toge pull together a series of internships for those students in Shanghai with Dan's assistance. Uh, and so, I mean, some really, really terrific, adventuresome, edgy things going on in the College of Architecture and Design. Oh, did I mention? Uh, a. Alfred Taubman is offering a real estate course here. He's on our faculty, <laughs> and it's really, a, it's really a fascinating thing to deal. Uh, it was written in the, in the newspaper. It's, it's like if you were studying music under Mozart uh, to study real estate under Taubman. I mean, he's, he's the guy that literally wrote the book about it. Um, our lecture series, as the president said, is the envy of schools around the country. There is a flyer in your in your handout that, that, that has that lecture series in it. Um, let me just, besides tonight, which is a lecture by a truly distinguished alumni of uh, international significance, uh, next week we have Raffaele Vinoli here. Next Wednesday, one week from tonight, uh, a truly distinguished international practitioner. Uh, and Thursday night, um, from one of the great industrial designers of our time, Adeste Doré. And, um, and by the way, the uh, Vignoli lecture is part of the A. Alfred Taubman lecture series here. Uh, and then on t uh, October 27th, uh, Michael Graves will be here. Uh, and uh, we hope everyone attends that, but there's another event associated with that, and it's our AIAS Freedom by Design auction that is the prequel to, to that lecture. Uh, and I just want to let you all know that there are tickets available to the auction, which has a bunch of features that they'll explain to you out there. The tickets are, are, are on sale for $25 per ticket, or uh, $35 per ticket, or $25 if you buy four or more. Uh, that includes a private reception uh, with, um, with both Mr. Taubman and Mr. Graves, uh, autograph book signings, and, and uh, by the way, we have two events going on on campus in addition to classes, reserve parking, all that kind of stuff. Reserve parking is worth the, the money alone on this campus. <laughs> so we, we hope that you uh, avail yourself of, of this really terrific event, and, uh, and uh, we think, we think it's, it's going to be one of the highlights of our year. And it, and it, helps fund a really good cause, which is our students working with people with disabilities to allow them to gain full access to their homes, which we think is, I mean, let's keep our, our, our eye on the ball. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's what this fundraiser supports. And uh, so a very worthwhile cause. So we hope you avail yourselves of the opportunities here. And uh, we really, truly appreciate all of our alums uh, for being here tonight and returning to, to see this, uh, to this pre presentation. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mark Farlow, who will introduce our speaker. Mark Farlow is a principal with Victor Soroki and Associates, and he joined the firm in 1992. In addition, Mark is serving as a professor in the Advanced Design Studio at Lawrence Tech 
and is teaching this unique online studio. He, had three, he has three architecture degrees from Lawrence Tech, including a Master of Architecture, a Bachelor of Architecture, and a Bachelor of Science in Architecture. Mark, you kept on doing it until you got it right, I say. Uh, and he is a past chair of the, of the Architecture Alumni Cabinet at LTU, a member of the Board of Directors uh, for the Birmingham Bloomfield Arts Center, and is president of the Birmingham Rotary Club. So, so I would like to introduce to you, and Mark, we appreciate everything you do, Mark Farlow. Thank you, Dean. I appreciate that introduction. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to this wonderful and special evening for the alums of the College of Architecture and Design. Uh, to begin with, I'd like to acknowledge the distinguished cabinet of architecture alums that comprise the Architectural Alumni Cabinet. Could I have the chairman, uh, the chairperson of our cabinet, Kimberly Lipinski, stand, as well as Charles Loomis, Kathleen Lilienthal, Keith Logsdon, Sam Michelli, if Sam is here, Sam usually serves in Haiti at this time, Russell Shainrath, and Melissa Smecker. Could we extend a warm round of applause? These are fine individuals that have as their goal uh, the promotion and service of th uh, philanthropy to the College of Architecture and Design. And as the past chairman of that cabinet, I have the distinct honor of introducing tonight's speaker. We also have some uh, harvest time gratitude to extend to some very special people in this room tonight. Um, I'd like to recognize uh, all of the previous recipients of the distinguished Alumni Award. Could you all please stand? Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is an accomplished group of architects in our community, and to some extent, uh, and in some cases, outside of our community. Uh, they are usually uh, involved in the selection of every year's Distinguished Alumni Award recipient. They make recommendations to our cabinet, and our cabinet ratifies their selections. So then we must also thank Ventizio and Gary Jellin for acting as bridge members to our cabinet from the Distinguished Alumni Award. So Gary and um, Ben, would you all raise your hand once more so that we can recognize you? <laughs> Yes, in fact, this is Ben's last year, and uh, we couldn't get rid of him any sooner than now. It took 14 years for him to get it right. Uh, and so Gary Jellin is taking that baton, and uh, we're very excited about that. Gary's been very involved in our meetings up to this point. Um, we'd also like to thank the staff, the excellent staff at JPRA Architects for the design of the program and all of the collateral material that you were handed when you came into this room. So to JPRA, we'd like to acknowledge you. And I'm not sure if uh, you are all aware, but the cabinet also helps to identify a distinguished graduate. And so every year we recognize a, uh, an accomplished graduate in the College of Architecture and Design with a fellowship that allows them to travel after they've graduated. This year's winner, Alina Chelladite, is the 2010 Pellerin Traveling Fellowship winner. Is Alina in the house? I'm not sure if she's here, but she had an amazing proposition uh, and, and, a, and a very, very beautiful thesis project that we had the pleasure of reviewing, and it was so nice to uh, hear uh, her, her, hear her win that award last week. So we look forward to her presentation in September of 2011. So make sure that you return for that. Um, you know, I think the other thing that's important to recognize at harvest time is that programs like the Pellerin Traveling Fellowship and programs like the Distinguished Alumni Award Program don't come cheap. And so what we'd like to do is lead off with a gesture of goodwill by um, offering for the Pellerin Traveling Fellowship a check from my wife and I towards the sustenance of that program. I'm also uh, confident that all of the cabinet members that serve 
in our alumni association are contributing. Could you all reach out of your purses and wallets and uh, could Chuck, could I ask you as our senior member to walk around and collect these envelopes? And we'd also like to encourage the previous recipients of the Distinguished Alumni Award, that's you, Art, to um, lighten your wallets with a contribution. We'd love for you to donate anything. And that goes for everyone in the house. And we have some people that will walk around and collect that money. And if you are a little bashful about all the 50s that you have in your wallet, Victor, you can put those discreetly in an envelope that you were given in the handout. We'll collect those envelopes at the end of the evening. Glenn, could you uh, add my envelope to yours, please? Thank you. <laughs> and we are grateful to you, to you for your support. It's very important that we try to uh, uh, make these contributions as alum. We have an obligation and a commitment to the sustenance of these excellent programs. Uh, I think we make the lives of those that come after us as alums better. As we mentioned, tonight's a very special night. Tonight we have Dan Whiney from San Francisco's Gensler office here. And, you know, my job was supposed to tell you all about Dan. And, you know, it would be sort of redundant, Dan, to read this and even to, to glean a couple of things to tell everybody about you. Um, so I'm not going to do that. But rather, it was my goal, I think, for me to give a snapshot of you to the attendees tonight. So I did some digging. And I find out from your colleagues at Gensler that you are, in fact, one of the nicest guys that they know. That you have an ability to put people at ease. That you're an artist, that you're a painter, that you're an avid gardener, and that on Mondays you report to work with dirty fingernails and scuffs and abrasions, which evidence the kinds of projects that you were doing that previous Saturday and Sunday. Victor, you'll like this. He's very fond of arts and crafts design, so on Saturday night you could talk about CFA Voicey. He travels extensively to China and Japan and to India. He is the oldest of 11 kids, which is why Perhaps he is so patient. It takes a lot to get Dan mad or to lose his cool, I'm told. And no matter the circumstances, Dan treats everyone with respect and patience. He's very passionate about mentoring and supporting the development of the junior staff at Gensler and all of the young people in the community. He's extremely generous. He genuinely cares about people, even if it's a personal sacrifice for him, he will help if he can. He is a proud Midwest Midwesterner. He is a Giants fan, of course, but whenever the Tigers are in town, he roots for the Tigers. And finally, um, he says things like, or their staff says things like, that they are impressed with how he made his family his number one priority. He's coached his son's baseball team, and if he had to leave a meeting, I hope that you're listening to this, Dom. If he had to leave for a meeting, uh, he'd get up to go to that game, and he'd tell everybody in the meeting exactly why he had to leave. He'd excuse himself and uh, move on to support the activities of his family. It's rare, perhaps, to meet someone uh, that has those qualities uh, in Dan's position. Yet, I think that if you recognize uh, Dan from that perspective, and from the perspective that he'll share in a few moments, you'll recognize that he's just like all of us. And that was my goal tonight. So it is with great honor that I have the opportunity tonight to present to you, Dan Whiney, the 2010 Distinguished Alumni Award uh, on behalf of the College of Architecture and Design. Dan?